Hi everybody, it's Claire from Gervin Library here and today we're going to have our monthly author spotlight. And today we are going to the dark side. We're going to talk Stephen King. Now Stephen King, even the name is just synonymous with horror writing, with iconic scary horror novels like The Shining, It, Salem's Lot, Pet Cemetery. But he's actually written over 60 books and he doesn't just write horror, he also writes crime. He also writes science fiction, he also writes fantasy, he writes drama. He's just an all-round brilliant writer. So even if you don't like horror, you could still enjoy Stephen King novels. I remember reading Stephen King for the first time when I was probably far too young to be reading Stephen King and I remember being so scared, it was Pet Cemetery was the book, I remember being so scared I used to have to put the book down for a while because I was so scared. Such an adrenaline rush. And then you would pick it back up because you were so intrigued, you were so entangled in the story that you had to keep reading even though you were petrified. And that's a brilliant reading experience. That is like a singular experience for a reader. Um, and I would want everybody to have that. Even if you don't like horror, the writing is so good. Stephen King says that easy reading comes from hard writing and it is easy reading. To read any horror book, or to read any book, but horror especially, you have to have what's called a suspension of disbelief. And that only means you have to be able to believe what you're reading. You have to be able to leave your disbelief at the door or else you're not going to enjoy the book. And Stephen King makes that easy to do. So although his ideas are out of this world, they're unique, they are well executed, you can suspend your disbelief about the Tommy Knockers, about the shining, because everything else is so well written. The characters could be your next door neighbour, your teacher, your work colleague. The settings could be the town just over from you. It's all very real. Um, it's all easy to read. It really is. Um, the characters for the most part are flawed. Most of the central characters are flawed. Um, a lot of them are maybe recovering alcoholics or they've maybe got a slightly dubious past. Some of them are actually quite repellent. Some of them you don't even really like, but you are intrigued. You are, you become involved with them. And a lot of them are trying to redeem themselves or they're trying to do the right thing. A lot of Stephen King's best writing, I really like um, the Richard Bachman books that he did in his pseudonym. He wrote seven books to Richard Bachman. He's written over 60 books in total and over 200 short stories, but the short stories aren't that short. They're more like novellas, although he doesn't like the term novella. Um, and some of his best writing, I think, is in the short stories. Um, so if you did want to try them, if you wanted to dip your toe in, you could try the short stories. Um, you could try The Bizarre of Bad Dreams, that short stories. Or Different Seasons, that's fabulous. That's got the body in it that the film Stand By Me was based on. Really, really good. And they're not horror. They are looking more at the horror of human nature at the depths that we can go to when we're put in tight situations, when we're constrained by circumstances. Do we do the right thing and try and elevate ourselves or do we go to the dark side? And that's real life, that is true. And that's why it's so good and that's why it's so believable. One of the writing techniques that Stephen King does that I really like, he's not the only writer that does this, but I think he does it the best. He uses italics to show you the inner dialogue and characters. So you'll have a scene, maybe quite a high tension scene, a lot going on, and you see the actions of the character and you maybe hear what they're saying, but he'll also then give you flashes of their inner dialogue just using these italics. And it just adds that extra depth to the scene, the extra depth to your understanding of the character. You, he also uses that to show telepathic conversations. So you'll see that in The Shining, you also see it in Doctor Sleep between Abra and Dan Torrance who was the wee boy from The Shining, because Doctor Sleep is a sequel to The Shining, and it's fabulous, it's a really good book. Um, so it doesn't disrupt the momentum of the narrative, because quite often these are at high tension points, and then you'll see the conversation going between Abra and Dan without breaking the momentum. So it just adds an extra dimension. It's something I've always really liked about his writing. It's quite distinctive the way he does it. My two books that I'm going to talk about today very quickly because you could talk about Stephen King for weeks. There's lots of fan forums if you wanted to get in deeper, there's loads of theories about you know the dark man and 
the Dark Tower series there's loads of fandom about for Stephen King so if you like that kind of thing there's loads of it out there. I'm just going to talk quickly about Doctor Sleep because it's the sequel to The Shining and when you first hear that you think mm, did it need a sequel? So I was a bit wary of it but it's actually a really well written book in ways don't be angry Stephen King fans but in ways I think it's better than The Shining. It's more maturely written, it flows better, it doesn't have the claustrophobia of The Shining, that's kind of unique to that book. Well Misery has that as well, it's got a lot of claustrophobia and it's set like in one place um, and they can't get out. But it's just, it flows more for me. I love the baddies in it, Rose the Hat is the main baddie, um, she's the head of the True Knot, which are these kind of otherworldly baddies. I don't want to give too much away in case you haven't read it. Um, and I love the teaming up of Abra, who's a 13 year old teenager, who's fearless, and Dan Torrance, who has become an alcoholic, he's flawed, he's got quite a dark past, but he's trying, he's trying his best. Um, and it's just a really good read and a really good kind of echoing of the shining throughout it. Really good. The dark half, I think, is quite undervalued in Stephen King's work. Um, it's about Thad Beaumont, who's a kind of boring, bland writer, recovering alcoholic, and his pseudonym George Stark, who's dark and who writes these violent horrors. And George Stark comes to life and it's about the battle between them. Now they're both flawed characters, I don't really like either of them, but it's fascinating. I like the symmetry of the dark and the light. I think it's Stephen King's most autobiographical book. He was a recovering alcoholic, he used a pseudonym. It shows you the dark side of creativity. Where do these ideas come from? Where do they come into the writer's head? How dark do they have to go to get there? I just find it fascinating. And who should win? Why should George Stark, the dark half, why should he just give up? He's only trying to live. So it's fascinating. And it is quite a fast paced book running you towards like a big climax that Stephen King is kind of well known for. So if you do want to try Stephen, if you've already tried Stephen King, if you're a constant reader, which is what his fans are called, you could try James Herbert. He was called the British Stephen King. But he's not. He's not the British Stephen King. He doesn't have the same subtlety. He doesn't have the same easy, easy writing, but still a really good read, still really good horrors, quite graphic horrors as well in parts. Or if you haven't tried Stephen King, you don't like horror, try the short stories, try the non-horror ones first. And then I guarantee you, you will probably go on to try the horrors because the writing is so good. After you read Stephen King, whatever you read after that, it's a little bit bland. His books are effervescent. You're completely invested in them. There are some of his books I don't like. He's not perfect by any means. I don't like Under the Dome. I don't like Gerald's Game. I don't like Dolores Claiborne. But I'm still glad I read them. They were still a good reading experience. So if you would like to try one of these reading experiences, these are all South Ayrshire Library Stephen King books that you can order into your local branch. So try these or try something else. Bye for now.